statistics and Excel. Coin flip statistics example in Excel part number two. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds and looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet in a prior presentation. So you could start from there with a blank sheet if you so choose. And we will be continuing on with the practice problem in a format where you might be able to simply open a blank worksheet starting from here going forward as well. If you do have access to this workbook, three tabs down below, example, practice, blank, example, in essence, answer key, practice tab, having pre-formatted cells, so you can go right to the heart of the practice problem. The blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet so we can practice formatting as we work through the practice problem. Problem. Let's do a recap of what we've done in prior presentations and then we'll take those concepts and continue on with this presentation. So we are imagining a scenario where we're trying to test whether or not a coin is fair. In other words, if we were to flip the coin, the null assumption is that it would come out or have a 50-50 chance of landing heads or tails. If we look at this from a, from a sampling kind of perspective, we can imagine the entire population then being a theoretical number as though we flipped it infinite amount of times. And of course, to test it, we're gonna take a sample, flipping it some finite amount of times and see whether or not we have a preponderance of evidence to overturn the null hypothesis, which is that we expect it to be a fair coin. Now, in order to do this in Excel, we practice using some tools to simulate a 50-50 uh, chance. And we used the between, so we took a random between one and two, so that Excel will give us a nice random sample. We showed how we can then, uh, we can then show the results in terms of heads or tails or ones and twos if we so choose and then how we can basically get, get these results and, and see how close they are to what we would expect if it was a fair coin, which would be the 50-50, noting it's not gonna be exact because we're just simply taking an example of an infinite number of flips. And then we saw how we can put together a table and come up with random uh, a random function in the tables and use that table to copy and paste uh, so that we can th run multiple tests. So in this case, we ran multiple tests with two and then three, and uh, I I'm sorry, with two and then three uh, and then four of them. And then we looked at our results, the percent that's head, the percent that's tails on a, a result to note that obviously if we take larger samples, we're usually going to tend more uh, closely to what we would expect the population result to be, which is going to be the 50-50, although, of course, uh, more uh, numbers in the sample does not necessarily, we're going to come up to a closer result than some other than a sample that has less results, because there's going to be an element of chance that's going to be involved. So now we want to take the same concept and just expand the number of flips that we have. So let's say let's say that we're going to test this out a hundred times with just let's say 75 flips just to get a, a nice number. And then we'll try to approximate what if the coin is not fair? How can we use our between function to simulate something that isn't fair so that we can test a coin that's not fair, right? So let's do, let's do our, our same normal kind of test with a fair coin. So we'll build out, uh, we'll build out 100 tests. So I'm gonna make a skinny AR column. I'm over here in AR. If you're working in a new sheet, you could just build a new sheet and start in column one if you so choose, uh, or column A. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put the number here. And I'm gonna say we're gonna go from one two and let's just do it to 75 i'm just going to not do 100 so that we have to still calculate the percent of the result so i'm going to select those two and take it down to let's say 75 so we'll flip it 70 times 75 times for each test 75 times i'm going to center that and then i'm going to say this is going to be test one and then test two and then I'm gonna copy that out a hundred times. So I'm gonna copy this out a hundred times. I'm putting my cursor on the fill handle, dragging to the right. Notice the testing, Excel's being nice and gives us that little 
uh, little hint or to show us what how far out we are. So there we're at 100. So there's 100 tests. Now I'm going to select all of these headers and make them my header formatting. So I'll select this whole thing and I'm going to make it home tab alignment center and at headers I usually make black background and white. So black, white and the headers. Okay. So now if I go all the way back on over, so now I'm, I'm going to now just implement my random knit, my random function equals rand between between one and two, one representing heads comma two representing tails, or you could do it vice versa, whichever way you want to see it, but one or two enter. And so that, so that comes out to one and so I'm, which is a heads, right? And I'm going to take that. I'm going to copy it all the way down to 75. And then I'm also, it might be easier to copy it and paste it instead of using the fill handle to drag it to the right so that I can see the headers. So I'm going to copy this whole thing, right click and copy. And when I paste it, it'll paste the cells. So I'm going to then select my cells from AU all the way to uh, the 100 tests. And then I'll put my cursor here and right click on the selected area and paste them. Not one, two, three, normal pasting. And there, there we have it. Now we have a hundred tests that have been populated. Now I might want to put a table into this. Uh, the table might make it easier to kind of randomly shuffle these. If I click on anything, notice they kind of randomly shuffle. So if I, but if I insert a table, insert tab, table, insert, and okay so now we've got our our table and if you sort the table up top in each row that kind of gives it a good shuffle and then and then it it reshuffles all the all the time right so now what we want to do i want to keep my shuffling here i want to keep this thing up so I, I can go back in and shuffle the 100 uh tests see every time i click something the whole table seems to shuffle so I'm going to hope that that is the case. So I get a nice random shuffle every time. And then I'm going to copy the whole table. I'm going to take the whole table. Or maybe I could just copy the headers. Let's do it this way. I'm going to copy from AS as all the whole, all the way down to Excel, the whole column out to uh, test 100 at EO and control C or right click and copy and then I'm going to paste it to the right but I'm going to paste it one two three so I'm going to paste it in let's paste it over here in ER er, and right click and I'm going to paste it but make sure I paste it one two three just the values only one two three values only so now it's not going to shuffle and I've got a hundred random tests hopefully they're all random right so then i could go down and i can i can do my averages on the 100 tests let's go ahead and format it though let's select the ones up top and do my formatting making this my header i'm going to go to the home tab uh black white and then center and then i'll select all of the data and we'll take this all the way to the right and all the way down through the data and i'll make it that blue that i like to use home tab font group and i'm going to hit the bucket drop down if you don't have that 